the basketball fan. So I, What's up? It's Rolly and me and Joe again here. It's uh, the second, our second try mm -hmm. at uh, the video log. Uh, this is a new thing for us. We usually just uh, recorded uh, podcasts. Before, yeah, we tried podcasts. Uh, I long, was, long one. There's still on iTunes, I think. So if you want to <laughs> download those very, very old episodes, better than mine. But now we're gonna try a new format. I think we we enjoyed ourselves in the first episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's something we can continue moving forward, hopefully on a very regular basis. Um, our episode today is going to focus on um, local basketball. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so we're on the PBA Commissioner's Cup playoffs action. That's uh, that's heating up. Quite a bit, no. Uh, we're looking at the standings right now. The top three teams are Raiders, Shine, you have Talking uh -huh. Text, and then Pure Foods, the defending champions, defending in, champs. That, in that order. They're all tied at 8 3, but because of superior quotient, uh, Raiders, Shine, and Talking Text will enter the quarterfinals um, with twice to beat advantages. Pure Foods is already locked in at number three. They will, they will be in a best of three series with whoever the sixth seed yeah. is. While uh, you might bang short playoffs now include the Baraco Bulls, you have the NX Road Warriors, and uh, I think Baraka is there. I think the Baraco Bull is already assured of a playoff spot already. Now, um, there are three other teams, I think, or four, uh, three, three other teams, I think, who are still fighting for the last uh, maybe two slots or yep. uh, uh, last slot actually in, in the playoffs. Now, you have Alaska, Global Port, both of whom are playing tonight in the Kia Carnival. Um, they're uh, global port, but at tapos na kaya part of the yeah, yeah. Alaska has one more game against Hinebra. So the results of that wow. are going to be very, very uh, significant for the playoff race. I'm sure that naglag na are Blackwater Elite. They're at the very bottom, two wins in 11 games, uh, and then you have the San Miguel. Uh, two wins in 10 games so far. They have one game tonight, and then the San Miguel Beermen, who even if they won last night at four and seven, and with a very, very low quotient, uh, they're already out of the playoff picture. So we won't really discuss who gets to the playoffs, yeah. but we'll uh -huh. talk about our personal favorites yeah. to maybe, uh, maybe make the semifinals and our favorite Final Final championship. Four. Mm -hmm. So you know, let's go Muna. I mean, you have you know, Raider Shy, Docket Tech, Spear Foods, Locked In, Veralco for a while looked really, yeah. really good. I think they won, they won their first three or four games. Um, and then they had a very, very, you know, they, had, they looked very good early in this conference. They went into a, a bit of a slump. Recently, who is your favorite, or which teams do you think have a very strong shot of uh, you know, doing well, making the finals for the commissioners? I think strong shots really you have to look at talking decks, I like talking decks really. And I still have a fan's choice of Morocco Bolts. I will wow. stick with them. I will stick I with them. That, huh? Okay, Why? I'm Why? looking at El Granada. Oh my, I see a uh, Sean Anthony, Cliff a, Hodge combo. A re-energized El Granada who's really scoring in bunches. And then, previously we talked about their He doesn't do much else, he just scores. He scores, but so far it's been working. I mean, Not in it's, the last it's five scary, games or so. It's carried them to <laughs> a above average record and into the playoffs. Now they have a chance. Okay, and now as for talking decks, their import. Um, Ivan Johnson. Ivan Johnson. At first, I thought Walash an outside shot, but he's actually making. He's very versatile. He's very versatile. Nagulat ako yun. Walash chure. Si para magbubung bug lang siya. Exactly. When he plays, intensity, defense, hustle, and of course, he's scoring. I like. Tignan nasa mga away ni ano ba ni Calvin Abuela in their last game. Tignan nasa. Alex Compton pa. I really. Kumihirit pa. I like the intensity. I like the import. So. If we're looking, I guess, at the import power or import star power, gusto ko yung import ng top index and Meralco um, Bulls, and I think they have enough to carry them at least to maybe the final four, maybe the finals. All right, ako, I'm gonna go a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with the top index pick. I think they're a very, very solid shot to at least make the Safe finals. Pick, no? I think Jason Castro has been playing well. Randall Dohapo lately has been playing well also. Of course, Ivan Johnson, he's, his numbers have been great. He's, he seems to be a better fit compared to Richard Howell. Yeah, although they were winning also with Howell a little bit. Yeah, they, you know, they had a good run with Howell, especially in the previous Commissioner's Cup in 2014. But Ivan Johnson's been a very, very good fit. But I'm going to pick, you know, as one of the top two teams, actually Pure Foods. Um, Defense of Bowles has been 
great lately for them. I think they've only lost one game with him back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, he has that experience leading this same team to a championship two years ago in Commissioner's Cup. Then he wants to to do well this year because last year, Medjo took struggle shot when he when he played for for this team. Eh? Um, I mean, when he came back, he struggled. So right now, Sung Sunan Bumawe. Um, he wants to defend the title with this team. Um, so it'll be very, very interesting to see um, how this thing moves along. I, I, I'm going to pick Pure Foods in Talk and Text to move into the finals. And, uh, I don't know, I'm picking Pure Foods to, to defend their title. It's right, but it was... It's like Maliari, Maliksi, they're like they're like games. Nila. So, I think they're a very, very solid choice. I actually like... I like the outside shot of you know, Denzel Bolton. and I like his... Uh, Theatrics when he makes shots. <laughs> it's very yes. confident. Ganda no swagger. Yeah, may, may swag talaga kasi ever since the money. Kasi masubat ako si Denzel Bolt. I think he is still in his early twenties, uh, early to mid twenties. So may swag talaga to. Very athletic. Yung nasabi mo may may good balance of a perimeter game. So it'll be very interesting to see how far these these teams go. Um, I'm not too confident about Miraco. I really think they. <laughs> I don't know, they, they were really good at the start, but I think teams have figured them out. Mm-hmm. I think Josh Davis has... Might be burnt you know, out. Maybe huh? a little burnt out. Yeah, he yeah, actually maybe looks... a little burnt out. Maybe, you know, maybe the opposing teams finally know how to play him already. And defensively, I'm not sold on the Bolts. Uh, and in the playoffs, that's, that's traditionally what wins you games. And not really offense, which they have, but defense, which I don't think they have a lot but I guess oh. we're in agreement about talking text. And if we're just left with one more team, you have Pure Foods, I have Moralco. If I'm not mistaken, I think Moralco beat Pure Foods. Moralco beat Pure Foods. Maybe fall Filipino. Well, we'll see. We have to go back to our schedule. In, in any right case, now, can't I'm, wait for that. I'm going to pick Pure Foods over Meralco. I mean, because Meralco, when they play off, they're going to fall through. I'm not too confident. Ka, ako naman, I'm thinking there has to be a first. It might be this. Well, could be, but it'll take a <laughs> heck of a lot of effort from from Gary David, from Sean Anthony, Cliff Hodge, Reina Lumnata, Kurt, my Cortez. Of course, my Cortez, who much up and down in game recently. But you know, at their best, Miraco is a, a, a potentially top tier team. Ah, yeah. I think they're, I am. they're very rarely at their best. So. Ah, yeah. so a lot of factors have to go in their way, and at the same time, Pure Foods has to be. Maybe on a downward spiral. Yeah, but really, Kaya, probably, probably not. Yeah, I'll admit, probably not, but again, I have faith, I still believe. It really goes against my better judgment to pick that out. <laughs> so I'm picking Talk and Text and Pure Foods, and I think, I think I have, those are very, very solid mm-hmm. choices um, for the finals. Now let's move on to something that happened, uh, you know, I think it was last week. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, we were talking about the physicality between Calvin Abueva and Ivan Johnson, but apart from that, um, one of the big newsmakers or noisemakers was Bo Belga, yes. who tussled with Mark Aguiwa in you know, one of the games. Four. And eventually, he got slapped with a pretty hefty fine. I think it was about 70,000 yeah. pesos. Uh, I don't think he was suspended. Uh, no suspension. But he was given a fine. Of course, again, na, na, na re-emphasize the na label that as you know, a bad boy, mm-hmm. but the reaction that was. Well, was it fair for him to get fined? I think it was fair for him to get fined. I actually expected him to get maybe a suspension because of a dirty finger here. Uh, if you saw the replays, I believe. But I'm seeing Kupa and I see Kagiwa no Pogabasa. He had his wrestling moves like an elbow drop, and then <laughs> yung sad talaga was when he. Fell on Eman Monfort, may kasampan tuhod. Yo. Parang, I mean, sa ulu eh. It's, it's, it's really dangerous. So, Belga can say as much that it wasn't intentional. But at the same time, sometimes you have to look at the results, even if it was accidental. So, I think the fines were okay. He knew what he was doing. Um, and let's face it. But um, you, you face Raider Shai and you face... Belga, you kind of pre- you have to prepare yourself yeah, for, some for that possibility because yes. he's he's been a very very physical player since he was in college for PCU, um, and you know he's never been apologetic about uh-huh. his physicality about uh-huh. the way he plays. You know, I'm not saying he plays dirty for a lot of people. That's probably how it looks like. And yeah. You can't blame them, 
but he's very physical. It's part of who, what his character is yeah. on the basketball court. So you really have to go into a game against him and expect that kind of uh, the, treatment. At the, the same game. time, if you know that he plays like that, you have to be prepared, ready, yeah. maybe accept the punishment, but do not retaliate. Yes, because it will hurt your team. So, on his part, Naman Belga, he does it well. I don't think he's a dirty player, but he's close. He's border bordering. <laughs> <laughs> like Charles Oakley, Charles Oakley, okay. yeah, Charles he's, Oakley he's, he's, Anthony Mason. You like his uh, competitiveness, <laughs> right? He, for his size, he can shoot from the outside. He can drive, and of course, he plays tough, rugged. Post offense, post defense. Classic Maganda. Filipino basketball. Maganda talaga. Exactly. A lot of us. <laughs> Can relate to how you play under the rim and be effective. Oh, parang si Oh, de ba parang funny nga because he did it against Nebra and he never had a classic player who just <laughs> was almost like Belga and that guy is Noli the Tank Luxin. Ba <laughs> similarities. I don't think Luxin ever need someone. Hindi naman siguro ganon ka. I don't know. Tough, but you can see the. Similarities in attributes, the right? outside shot, driving, tough defense, very physical, physical. So and dun eh. So ang we have ironic lang na he did it to us in Nebra. Okay. Actually, if you look at Bo Belga, if you could redraft him, siguro he'd be a perfect fit for a classic Nebra <laughs> team. Oh, right? Never I mean, say that. Side Jaworski would probably love to coach him. Ah, no disagreement. Hundred percent agree. All right, our last topic, the for for this particular episode, we'll focus on. Uh, a college player who mm-hmm. still has one year of eligibility in the UAAP, but recently he announced very publicly that he's declaring for the draft, the 2015 PBA draft, and we're talking about no other player, uh, no other than, uh, than Roy Suma, the yeah. UAAP Red Warriors. Yeah. Now, Roy Suma, of course, one of the top scorers in the college game, um, a very, very speedy, streaky point guard. He played for Sina Pilipinas before as well, and he's definitely going to be one person to look out for in the 2015 draft. Do you, do you think it's a good move for Roy Suma to move up even if he has one more year of eligibility? Remember, this is something that Terrence Romeo did yeah. a couple of seasons ago. Like he still had one year left in his UAAP playing years, but he chose to forego that and move up to the pros. Same thing for Suma. What do you think? I think Suma probably... I'm sure he actually did. He weighed these options and looked at his incoming or his current batch of UAE Red Warriors players and so on. Chances of winning something slim to maybe not even making again the, the final four. Final four. four. So with that in mind, so you're not sure if Suma is going to be able to do it. So you're not sure if Suma is So you're not sure if Suma is going to be So you're not sure if Suma is going to be able to do it. So you're not sure if Suma is going to be able to do it. I can make quick box. I can uh, uh, expand my uh, exposure. I'd go for the PBA. And since he's one of the top point guards in the outside UAP, of PBA, yeah. I'd go for it. I understand it. And I'm, I still can't say it's not... I don't think it's a bad decision in a lot. All right. So, okay, let's move, in, move on to this particular discussion. He moves on to the PBA. Which team mm. will benefit the most from having a Roy Sumang there? Roy Sumang... In a way, he plays like Romeo. They're very, um, they're, they're volume shooting guards. Yeah. They like taking outside shots. They drive. like going, you know, to the basket in a very devil may care way. Um, you know, he's of course he's not as as, as tall as Terrence Romeo. Mm-hmm. I don't think he can play shooting guard because Romeo plays shooting guard. Yeah, so it from point guard. Point guard. Where will Roy Subang fit? I have to, I have off to the top of, your off head. of my head. He's a, I think, a younger, better version of L.A. Tenorio. So, wow! So, Tenorio so, and Suma, huh? Pwede, sa Ginebra siya, pagka mag-move on na si L.A. Pwede, mag-move on na si L.A. So, let's say he ends up with Ginebra. The rotation could be Tenorio, Monfort, uh, Rubistondo. So, ibig sabihin, hindi. Ibig sabihin, one of them has to move on. So, either matanggal na dyan si Tenorio, which... Some wow. never fans want to be out there, the wow. right? Maraming katawa kay L.A. Trade I'm LA. not sure about Suma. Baka pwede. Baka pwede. Wow. Kasi there's similarities in their game. Okay? Off the top of my head, yun ang first team na naisip ko. Wow. Second team Didn't na pwede, that, eh? na kulang ng point guard, 
Hmm. Eh, yung mga expan- expansion teams na, like, although Kia has LA Revilla, parang, pwede rin sweet, ano nun, si Suma. Blackwater has, uh, they have Brian Herman, who's playing really well, actually. Who's playing really well, who's also rookie, so baka hindi rin. Um, ikaw muna, meron ka bang maisip? Actually, I'd, I'd like to see him maybe in Meralco, mm-hmm. maybe even NX, Actually, or, or Kia. I think those teams are in dire need of a point guard who will not necessarily dominate the game, but a point guard who has really a lot of potential. Yeah, something who's ready to learn, yeah, yeah. absorb. So. Um, and next, Jonas Villanueva is, you know, he's yeah, playing. He playing a lot. This yeah, is, I think, a down. ceiling already. Meralco's Mike Cortez, who was playing well, but he's up there but in age. his health is yeah. a big question mark. I'm not sure how long he'll stay in the PBA. Pa. Um, of course, Kia needs all the scoring that they can get. Um, so I think Roy Suman can't help any of those three teams. So I'm not saying teams. he's going to make any of those teams an instant contender. By no means is that going to happen. But he's going to give them another potentially exclusive scoring option. Just like what Romeo did for, for Global Warning Corner before. Mm-hmm. before right? A lot of people were skeptical. Romeo, back away. And it's true. But... You know, it's like Russell Westbrook in PBA, but he's a But he's unapologetic. He 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 does, he's not sorry for the way he plays. And I think Global Port is slowly improving because of that. And I think Roy yeah. has the potential to be the same kind of player in the pros. Okay, so we have expansion teams, and then other than you have Miral Quinn and Lex Hakeen, I think. Hinebra. Hold on, I'm not a Hinebra fan, guys. Huh? Make you sure, but I see you. Actually, you're a closet Hinebra fan. <laughs> Sino sabi niya gusto niya pure foods pero ayon yata talaga. Gusto niya si Tenorio kaysa kay Manolo pa rin. Si talaga ni Rodi. <laughs> All right, so what do you think? Who are your PBA playoffs favorites for the Commissioner's Cup in 2015? What do you think about Bo Belga? Where will Roy Sumang fit uh, perfectly when he finally makes mm-hmm. a jump to the pros? You can tweet us. You can follow us on on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram as well. Um, our Twitter handles are. Right there at the bottom. In our next episode, we'll talk about some burning NBA issues mm-hmm. like Kevin Durant, you know, getting shelved for the entire season and uh, the playoff race, of course, and some other things. So watch out for that. Thank you very much. See you guys. And, uh, Thanks. Rolly and me, sign out.